Ever since I was a child, whenever I hear the song of a bird in nature and the answering calls of its mates, I used to feel as if I could visualize the notes sung in scale, all spread out within my consciousness somehow as a natural symphony. Ever since then, I wanted to know the name of every bird. I wanted to know how they got their beautiful colors. And I wanted to know why do they sing and how do they sing? But living in a country where we appreciate birds for their meat more than their songs, there was no one to tell me or answer my questions. Edward Cummings once said, your head is a forest full of songbirds. Although he meant here by songbirds our ideas, thoughts, and emotions, I felt there's a continuous call within my thoughts and emotions to get closer to and understand these wonderful feathered vocalists. Time flew by, my interest in bird song was rekindled once I graduated from UB in 2005 and moved to America for my PhD. Being new to USA and being ever fond of birds, I decided to get a couple parakeets home. I did so. Very quickly, they became my wonderful roommates. Not only that, I taught them how to eat from my hands, I taught them how to fly to my shoulders, and I told them how to say a few words like Habibi, hey, and okay. They were not only great vocalists, they were also great listeners. I could swear they would listen to me and feel me. And I continued wondering, how can they think and feel? More so, it was ever mind-blowing to me. How can these tiny little creatures learn to imitate vocal sounds? And sometimes with an attitude. If we record sound nowadays via a microphone, we can understand and explain the underlying physics, electronics, and every other concept which enables us to hear our recorded sounds. But with birds, it was like a black box. I had no idea what was going inside their fragile skulls. And what's the internal brain circuitry that's orchestrating this very interesting behavior? There's an ancient proverb that says, it's very hard to find a black cat in a dark room especially when there is no cat. I find this particularly accurate description of my scientific curiosity and the continuous monologue of questions in my head about many things around me. Always wandering around in a dark room, bumping into things, trying to figure out where those black cats are, but never finding a satisfying answer or even the route to do so. Then I thought I found this route. It was a neuroscience, the study of the brain and behavior. And I quickly realized that neuroscience can be the flashlight that illuminates the dark room and help me find those black cats. As you can guess, I started studying the songbird brain. You see, those birds offer neuroscientists with lots of advantages to answer many fundamental questions about our brain. And they are accessible to invasive research techniques, which for obvious ethical reasons, not possible in a human research. Imagine, for example, you'd like to understand how a computer works, and all that what you can get your hands on is a screen, a mouse, and a keyboard. You really would be unfortunate, right? Because you'd like to open the computer, crack it open, and look at the wiring inside. But we can't do so with the human brain. And the brain is a learning machine. Many cognitive and motor skills that we exhibit, such as playing the piano, or learning a sport, such as hitting a tennis ball, these skills are not innately programmed, which means they don't come to us from the sky or via genetics. Rather, they are learned through a process of trial and error and often after extensive practice. One example of a skill which you may not have thought of, but which humans are particularly good at, is language or learning how to speak. Young children need to listen to the vocalizations of their parents and they quickly learn to reproduce them. We hear the world around us in very similar ways, just as birds. I'm going to give you just a couple examples. Neither birds can sing normally, nor human babies can speak normally if they are not being tutored by their parents or adults near them. Once speech and bird song are learned, they often remain remarkably stable throughout lifetime. For example, you know, it's very difficult to change our accents once we are adults or to develop fluency in a new language. The same with birds. 
And if songbirds were deafened when they are babies learning their songs, then their songs would be highly abnormal. Likewise, with the humans, if a human babies were born deaf, then they don't acquire spoken language. And if they were born with normal hearing abilities, but they become deaf throughout their lifetime due to some injury, then their vocalization will deteriorate markedly. Already a billion people around the world have some kind of a brain disorder, whether it's schizophrenia, Parkinson's, depression, Alzheimer's, and so on. And the disorders associated with vocal communication and learning are just as quite dramatic themselves. These diseases, they not only steal our time to live, they change who we are and they alter our identity and our emotions. So next time you are outside listening to a bird singing, I hope you remember that this is a very complex learned behavior and that we can understand so much about our own brains and behavior from studying birds. I hope that you get to appreciate, love, and study a bird instead of shooting it. I hope we don't take everything for granted around us, for example, the brain. Rather, reflect on its majesty. This couple kilograms of flesh which you can hold in your hand but which can meditate upon the vastness of the universe. It can ask questions about the meaning of infinity and even a question its own existence. It's really the most incredible thing in the world. I hope you realize that the derogatory term bird brain is very wrong and can be rather taken as a compliment. After all this journey, I'm more fascinated with bird song than I ever was. It's beautiful, it's challenging, and it's truly a reflection on the masterfulness of Mother Nature. And finally, let's remember what Maya Angelou once said, a bird doesn't sing because it has an answer, it sings because it has a song. Thank you. <laughs>